Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to my garage. Um, I have a few followers now. I never thought I'd actually have as many as 27, so welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I started doing this because it amused me, and it still does, so I still want to do this. Um, and I appreciate everyone who views the videos, everyone who drops a like. Uh, but I never gave you guys an introduction video. My name is Daniel. And I work in a small box retail shop, uh, national chain, all of you will know, will know who it is. I am not going to mention it on my channel, uh, because this is for me and not for work. Uh, so I do a bunch of things as a hobby and over the last year and a half, two years now, uh, well, over the last four or five years, I've been teaching myself a little bit how to forge. I picked up a forge, which is over there. Um, about two years ago now, I got myself at my first anvil, and I picked up two vices at the same time I picked up my anvil. Uh, and that started me along vice collecting, vice restoration, because uh, it was really an incredibly fun experience taking this rusted hunk of metal, cleaning it down. The sound the cast iron makes is weirdly soothing when you're cleaning it with a uh, wire with a knotted wire wheel. I've, there's a great community out there of people who collect tools, collect vices. Uh, so that's really a lot of fun. So I thought I'd introduce myself and give you guys a little tour around my garage. Um, so this is a detached two car garage. It's basically my workshop. Cars never live in here. Um, so we're gonna start here. This door works, this door doesn't. The pulley is, uh, off up here i know i know i can get that redone and i did have electric redone in this garage when i bought the house because all well, the electric one here was kind of scary honestly it was a handyman special there were wires draped everywhere i got great light fixtures put in you know above using those super bright lights uh, that are great for garage i love daylight color lights so that's the color I use in pretty much all my lights. I know some people like the slightly yellower, the 3100, even the 4100. I really do like the 5000, 6000 K color, just personal preference. So in here, you know, I've got my tractor. I've got these great shelving units that came with the house. I've got my portable, um, my little rolling butcher's cart, baker's rack, whatever it's called. And then here I've got my three foot and you know three and a half foot four foot rolling workbench that me and my dad put together i have fantastic parents i love them uh they are getting a little up there in age so i'm going to help them out in a little bit move things things help them move some things around for the weekend a little bit later uh but doing this video first and then i'm going to show you the little tool haul i picked up yesterday as well oh i got that out of the frame but yeah, here's a uh, cedar line chest I'm putting back together for my fiance. Needs some sanding, needs some work on it. Here is another, you know, another look here with, uh, these are my made in New York vices up here. I've got my Oswego, my Franklin, my Fulton. My Prentices are, you know, my 22 I'm working on. I've got a 20 that I love. Uh, then here are some Parkers. You can see this guy's all rusted up. This Parker 202 with the green paint, which I'm pretty sure is original is actually in really fantastic shape this little desmond stevens uh simplex three inch vice here this is the smallest one in the stationary line and another parker here again rusted up but in very good shape this columbian all rusted up but actually moves really great four and a half inch swivel jaw columbian missing a pin uh charles parker that i restored here the 23x you know, this athel 615 which i restored uh, i really like the navy blue for my athels so uh that's really the color i've made my athels here's the 633 this was the original rusty hunk of junk and i had no idea about a swivel jaw and athel is one of the only companies that has a threaded pin for that so you know that was an experience when i learned it because i painted that i thought that was just holding it in i didn't realize that was a single was two pieces meant to be done differently so i learned uh which is cool a wood vice that'll eventually mount somewhere, maybe. I don't know. I picked it up cheap. Uh, <laughs> you know, some busted pieces here. This one's actually a five inch older Athol that is rust welded. Uh, I did have it on a press and, you know, that I borrowed from a friend, had it set up. 
I've got a leg vise here with this fantastic welded stand, another leg vise that's being worked on, another one over here, another one in the corner, bunch of vices over here. You know, more cabinets, keep, you know, uh, 603M Colombian, and really actually love that green paint job. Then this table, uh, I bought it because it had this vise attached to it, and it was cheap, so it was a great pickup. Uh, great for, you know, this one's a four and a half inch vise. Um, I need to sell some of these vices. If anyone wants one, drop a, drop a comment to let me know. Um, but, uh, this table, the wood was all rotted. I cleaned it down with the wire wheel. I picked up a new board, uh, put it in. And then I got this sander from a guy up in Jeffersonville, uh, who used to make incredible brass fixtures. He did a lot of the brass work at the hotels in Manhattan, um, and had some incredible, uh, features, but he was going out of business, sold the shop, retired, you know, all that fun stuff. And, uh, this was a great pickup. I learned uh, to rewire that and wired to switch in, which was cool. This tape bench came with a house, including that little Littleton vice there. There was another one where I've got my standard three and a half. Uh, then I've got my forge over here. I've got my Craftsman bandsaw. I've got another grinder over here. You'll notice all of these are on heavy duty locking casters with, uh, you know, plywood uh, reinforced you know, it's two layers of plywood and then a little, uh, you know, two by four cutoff to hold the casters. So it's really solid. Uh, my Delta drill press, which is a uh, World War II era Delta, which is great. You know, my uh, freezer. Everyone who has a garage, if you have the space, you need a garage freezer. I don't care if it's chest freezer, standing freezer, you need a garage freezer. My toolbox, which are actually passed down from my father. He would... Uh, is not happy with my organizational skills. I keep getting better, but I'm not be the best at organization, as you guys can all see. My anvil. There's a water heater stand. I actually need a better stand. Some tongs, some tools. I just picked up this uh, table base the other day, and I'm actually thinking I will rebuild my primary rolling work table with this table base and maybe do a five by three instead. Uh, but that was a nice pickup. That's the top of the cedar chest. My fiance loves purple. Purple's my favorite color too. It is covered with dust because it's been sitting for a year. I need to get it finished, but we have no room in the house. I have too much furniture. I'm terrible that way. When my fiance lived in her own apartment before we were engaged, before we were living together, um, I picked up this Ethan Allen coffee table, which I uh, stripped down and redid. This was given away for free. I gave it a poly coat. Needed, you know, it's not the best job in the world, but hey, someone gave away an $800 coffee table for free. This thing is solid maple. This thing is amazing. Um, so feel free to drop some comments. Give me some love. Tell me how terribly organized I am. Uh, you know, I know. Uh, but I'd actually love to hear, you know, constructive comments. Hey, you could do this better. You could do that better. Ask me any questions about anything in here. Again, this is my Athol collection and Athol and Starrett collection. Those are my personal collection. I'm keeping those. That is what I collect. The rest of these are absolutely cool, but they are also all for sale. Uh, but anyway, again, thank you for joining me. I am Daniel. Um, and before I go, I just want to show you my little tool haul from yesterday, uh, which is kind of cool. So I went on Craigslist, because Craigslist has some fun stuff, and you can still get things some good price there. And I picked up this 4-inch blacksmith post vise. Now you'll notice jaw's not aligned here. This is actually bent a little here. But this, I can, th I can get that in the forge, get that hot, get it to, and bend that back over, because this is wrought iron, uh, and that does take to forging fairly carefully but fairly well so i can actually straighten that out and get this aligned much better but this was a great buy the threads on the screw box everything in here is in great shape the tenon is in great shape so what does a leg vise do for you that the more traditional bench vise doesn't so on a leg vise post vise, blacksmith vise, sometimes called a box vise, you clamp it up here. The screw box here is floating in here. So when you're torquing on this, it is not going to be transmitting it to the body of the vise. 
In fact, when you ha when you lock this down and you hammer on this, or you do any work, it, all the force transmits through the body to the ground through this leg, which is why a post vise needs to be touching the ground or mounted to a steel plate or something that's mounted to the bound. So all the force goes through it and goes to the ground. And this is dead straight. This is perfectly straight. There's only that little bit of damage in the uh, uh, dynamic jaw. Uh, and that is an easy fix when I have the time and bother to do it. I have way too many projects going, as you know. Then I picked up this Paramo, made in England, six inch vise. This is a high duty Paramo vise with the swivel plate. Um, and in England, they spell it V-I-C-E. We think of that as vice that involves, you know, Grand Theft Auto uh, and the such. And this is dead smooth. It is missing a screw here, uh, but this moves fantastic. This weighs a little over 90 pounds or so. Um, and if anyone's interested in it, I will probably be selling it. So, you know, let me know, hit me up. We'll see. It'll probably be on Facebook at some point. I do sell through Marketplace. I have way too many vices. Uh, I've got about 25 of them listed right now. Then I got this Reed 104. Missing a handle. It's got a mounting lug in the rear, broken. And it's covered in weld splatter. These three vices were from a retired welder who closed his shop. Apparently this was on the corner of a workbench. This was just on the ground, kind of laying there discarded because I guess they broke the handle or whatever. Now it still moves. Um, it's still in good, it's still in workable shape. Honestly, I'm thinking this one isn't even gonna get a major restore. I'm gonna get a foot long bolt, 12 inch bolt, maybe even 11, 10, whatever. Um, some acorn nuts, maybe round them off, some red Loctite. Uh, and this is a workhorse, this is a reed. So this one I'll probably let go pretty cheap. You know, I'm thinking, you know, $75, maybe even less. Because uh, this, uh, you can still bolt this down. You can still use the rear lug, even though it's broken off with the other two. Uh, and this won't go anywhere. And this will just be a solid beast of a workhorse. Now, this six-inch Paramo, this is the first English-made vice. I've seen records. I've seen Paramo. This got a beast of a slide support here. I had this out when I took it apart. The nut is cast in. Uh, and apparently these look like records as well, uh, which is the better well-known um, English vice. Uh, because during World War I, World War II, they were made in the same factory to preserve it in uh, two or three different factories in case one of them was lost in the war in a bombing. Um, a little bit of interesting history there. Uh, but, you know, I am working on my Prentice 22. That's going to be my six-inch user, so I don't really need this. Um, it was just, I couldn't pass it up. It was such a great deal. I mean, I see these things selling anywhere from 250 to $650. Uh, so I couldn't pass it up. So hopefully I will make a little profit on it. Um, and this is my tour, uh, introduction and a little bit of tool haul. Um, you know, I appreciate everyone who's joined me. Drop a like, you know, more subscribers would be awesome, but I'm still going to do this because I find this kind of fun. This is interesting to me. Uh, I like talking to myself. I like talking to others. So yeah, I'd love to hear what you do, uh, hear what you think, because um, I am making it a point. I really am trying to respond to everyone's comments. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you next time around.